Hi everybody, it's me, Jen, and I'm nothing if not intense. It's Sunday, July 29th. What I found in the latest body cam release, release number 12, if you're going by Las Vegas Shooting Archive, which is what I always use, so a big, huge, huge thank you to him because it's just tremendous what he does and his dedication so I couldn't do what I do without him at this point I think because it seems like I always have to reference something on his channel to do what I'm doing so again thank you thank you thank you so much um, this is body cam number seven of eight again release number 12 and I will leave the link uh, Bitsko is telling one of the officers in the stairwell, they're in the stairwell on the 32nd floor, call Matchko, who Matchko's down at the other end of the hall, like in the center core, or he's at the end of the hall. And so the officer is on the phone and he is literally like, don't do anything yet. Okay, the zebra, the zebra unit, of, these two words I'm not sure, exactly sure, but I think he's saying official lead. The zebra unit official lead, he's going to move out the door. Tell everybody not to shoot. There's a couple that's going to come out the door. What in the hell? This is the way I interpret it, that there is a zebra unit, another zebra unit, already on the 32nd floor, because Levi, who is a zebra, zebra 20, who wasn't logged on the first time he came up on the radio, so who knows long, how long he had been in Mandalay Bay, I wonder if this zebra unit is logged on, and who that zebra unit is. But the way I take this is there's a freaking zebra unit in that room, in room 32, 135. He's going to move out the door. He's going to open that door. Nobody shoot, please. There's going to be a couple coming out. Then they're like, are you ready? You ready? Ready? Okay. Yeah, we're ready. He know, you know, like, Mashko knows, blah, blah, blah. Then all of a sudden, Levi is like, everybody downstairs, everybody downstairs. That's why when in the other officers' body cam, like uh, Hendrix and Varson, when they all come running back downstairs, before the breach, well before the breach, this is at like 11.08 um, p.m. that night. And somebody says, why, you know, why are you coming, why are you running down or whatever? And they're like, I don't know. They just said, everybody downstairs, everybody downstairs. So again, don't ask me why the zebra unit is there. Don't ask me who the couple is. I don't know, people. All I know is what I hear, and I'm bringing you that. So I can't explain why or what or who. I'm just telling you this is what I hear. And... I'm going to play the video and I've enhanced my audio on this computer, however I don't know if it's going to work, but again, it's something that I originally caught when I had my earbuds in, so I don't want to hear in the comments, I can't hear, I can't hear it. You need to use headphones or earbuds, but hopefully this new audio extension thing I have will help. I don't know. I highly doubt it because this computer is such a POS. So we're going to take a listen. So Bitsko, Newton, and Hancock are basically in, in between um, the door that leads to the hallway and the door that leads to the stairwell. The one with the L bracket on it. And 
the officer is going to be over here on the left that is uh, communicating with, I believe, Matchko over cell phone. Pretty interesting. Who who is this zebra unit, and who's the couple? Now we're gonna uh, watch as Levi comes back through that door and tells everybody to to get downstairs. And if you've watched the other body cam videos, especially of Hendrix and Barson, you've already saw you've seen this from a different perspective when they come running down the stairs. But this kind of puts it more in perspective of why they came running down the stairs. Let's watch. I'm not sure why he had them all go back downstairs, but it must have been something relating to the people that were coming out of that room, I think. And I know that I'm going to have people out there saying, oh, they weren't talking about room uh, 32, 135. I, that's... That's how I perceive it. I mean, what other room would they be talking about? What other room would they be afraid of, really afraid of coming out of and being shot? Number one, that's going to be 135 at that point. So, it's, I, I don't know. I mean, it almost leaves me speechless. That's 11.09, you know, 10, 10 minutes before they quote-unquote breach the door. It is just so wonky. I don't know. I just don't know. But the couple, again, I, you know, I'm sorry that I don't know who it is or why. I, I just, I don't. I'm just telling you this is what I found, and obviously the people that know are the officers like Levi and whoever that other zebra unit was, Matchko, Lombardo, and Rouse. I mean, those are the people that know. Those are the people that know who walked out that door, not me. I'm just, just bringing you the information that, hey, obviously... There was more than one person in that room, which we know. We know now with the release of, within all these uh, document dumps, that there was three other females registered in that room. So, was the couple that was coming out, was that two of those females? Um, that would... That would be the thing that would kind of make sense to me. Um, I don't believe it was Mary Lou Danley because I think at that point she was already gone from the hotel in Paddock's van. But that's a whole nother story. I'm not going to get into that, but um, I've been working on that for a while and I just, I got to get it out there, but with the, the vehicles and 
and obviously more Mary Lou Danley stuff, but um, which I think is important. Um, when I posted the video about how Sheriff Joe let it slip that, you know, you know, Mary Lou Danley, the other individual involved with this event, his girlfriend, uh, you know, somebody comments, well, what difference does that make? And with the L bracket, L bracket, what difference, what difference does it make who put it on there? I just, that blows my mind. If you don't know what difference it makes, then just give it up because it speaks to the very heart of the narrative that they've shoved down our throats for months and months and months and months. That's a total bunch of BS. So if you just, if you think that that's fine, that they just blatantly lie about all this stuff, then I guess it doesn't make a difference. But if, if you're of a different frame of mind and think that it's por important that the truth and the facts come out and the victims, the victims' families deserve to know the truth, then those, Mary Lou Danley is key. Uh, the L bracket is important because I, I don't have to go through it all because the people that have been working on this and investigating and researching know the importance of those things. So I, I'm not going to uh, pontificate on that because if you don't know by now, then there's, I'm not going to waste my breath. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I hope I'm, I'm probably coming off a little pissy. So I apologize. Um, but anyway, back to this, uh, we're going to, I'm going to play the, officer who's communicating with Matchko. We're going to run through that one more time. And again, I believe that that he's saying, hey, you know, don't do anything yet. There's a zebra unit in there, in the room. He's going to move out of that room. He's going to open that door. And then there's a couple that's going to be coming out. So don't shoot. This is at 11.09 p.m. October 1st. Very, very disturbing to me. Let's watch that again. So there you have it, folks. This whole thing, or the narrative, I guess I should say, just really calls to mind an old adage that I've kind of lived my life by for the last nine years, eight, nine years. Um, just because somebody's trying to sell you a bag of shit doesn't mean you have to buy that bag of shit and that's how I feel about the narrative but there are some narrative hanger honors I'll hang on to the narrative too if it was the truth um, I drank that Kool-Aid for about a week two weeks maybe and uh, yeah that was about it so all right guys let me know what you think I know you will but if you like what I do, please subscribe, um, share. You can always share my videos. Just please give me credit and um, leave the link in the description or, you know, whatever, however you share it. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks so much, and I will be back at you soon.